Well, greetings again, everyone, and welcome to another mini Sunday service for the churches in Aberporth, Blindporth, and Betis Ivan, and anyone else who happens to be watching. My name's Chris, and today we're going to sing some hymns, say some prayers, and look at quite a spicy topic, which is how did Jesus handle anger, and what did he have to teach about it that can help us in our slightly angry world today? Should be interesting and kind of topical right now if you keep up with the news. But first, we're going to sing a, a hymn, Praise to the Lord. Praise to the Lord, the Almighty, the King of creation. Oh, my soul, praise him for he is thy health and salvation. And all ye who hear now to his temple draw And whoever or wherever we are, we meet together today in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Now, the Psalms really are the songbook of the Bible, and they are packed with God's people pouring out their raw emotions to him. And I don't know about you, but I've been finding them extra poignant at this difficult time in the world. So please join me as I say Psalm 116, which is a song all about trusting God in his love and salvation, with words that recommit ourselves to his loving arms and ways of truth. I love the Lord, for he heard my voice. He heard my cry for mercy. Because he turned his ear to me, I will call on him as long as I live. The cords of death entangled me. The anguish of the grave came over me. I was overcome by distress and sorrow. Then I called on the name of the Lord. Lord, save me. The Lord is gracious and righteous. Our God is full of compassion. The Lord protects the unwary. When I was brought low, he saved me. Return to your rest, my soul. 
for the Lord has been good to you. For you, Lord, have delivered me from death, my eyes from tears, my feet from stumbling, that I may walk before the Lord in the land of the living. I trusted in the Lord when I said, I am greatly afflicted. In my alarm I said, Everyone is a liar. What shall I return to the Lord for all his goodness to me? I will lift up the cup of salvation and call on the name of the Lord. I will fulfil my vows to the Lord in the presence of all his people. Precious in the sight of the Lord is the, the death of his faithful servants. Truly I am your servant, Lord. I serve you just as my mother did. You have freed me from my chains. I will sacrifice a thank offering to you and call on the name of the Lord. I will fulfil my vows to the Lord in the presence of all his people, in the courts of the house of the Lord, in your midst, Jerusalem. Praise the Lord. And our reading, well, our Bible reading today is from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 5, from the Sermon on the Mount. And Jesus is speaking here to his disciples about the relationships, about their relationships with other people and their relationship with feelings of anger. So we start at verse 21. Jesus said, You have heard that it was said to the people long ago, You shall not murder, and anyone who murders will be subject to judgment. But I tell you that anyone who is angry with a brother or sister will be subject to judgment. Again, anyone who says to a brother or sister, Raka, meaning idiot, is answerable to the court. And anyone who says, You fool, will be in danger of the fire of hell. Therefore, if you are offering your gift at the altar and there remember that your brother or sister has something against you, leave your gift there in front of the altar. First go and be reconciled to them, then come and offer your gift. Settle matters quickly with your adversary who is taking you to court. Do it while you are still together on the way, or your adversary may hand you over to the judge, and the judge may hand you over to the officer, and you may be thrown into prison. Truly, I tell you, you will not get out until you have paid the last penny. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Well, I'd like to start with a question. What was the last thing that made you angry? Some of you who are generally quite calm and chilled out might have to think about that for a while, while others might be jumping out of their chair with a long list of upsets that have been driving you nuts over the past 30 years or so. No one can deny that, if you turn on the news, we see that the world seems to be an exceptionally angry place right now. In fact, the whole United States have been so angry and divided uh, that protest and anger have been spilling out of it and into other countries. And that's not to mention the anger we might be feeling about the coronavirus situation or about people who are breaking the restrictions or, or simply the anger we feel at problems and strained relationships in our own lives or our past hurts or any unrighteousness we see in the world like racism. Anger is a feeling that almost defined my whole generation. Back in the 90s, the director of MTV, the most culturally influential music channel on TV at the time, said that they sought to communicate only two feelings to their teenage audience at the time, intimacy and anger. And now that sense of anger seems to have transferred across the internet to divisive and polemic memes and articles and posts that sweep through social media, which are often comprised of fake news or wild exaggerations or ungraciousness, but which rile people of all different opinions and politics very effectively. And on the internet, it's so easy to dismiss and dehumanize people that I think we're actually becoming far more divided as a society, as fewer and fewer people on all sides are slow to stop and listen to each other, quick to call out in anger. It's almost like an addiction that's growing and growing in our society. It's so worrying. Now, a lot of the anger we end up feeling tends to be righteous anger. There are a lot of things going on in the world, either systematic problems or isolated incidents, which it is right to feel angry about. Injustice, intolerance, unfairness, perceived or real. And very often, simple misunderstandings can be found anywhere and in anyone's lives. But something else is quite certain. 
The way people choose to behave when they're angry can have big effect on themselves and especially on the people around them. The history books are littered with examples of, of famous criminals and even international leaders who made destructive decisions, committed atrocities, waged wars, and even engaged in terrorism as a response to the hatred that they and their countries felt inside. What do you do when you're angry? How do you react? Well, generally, people tend to react in one of two ways. Firstly, you get hedgehogs. Now, when someone who's a bit of a hedgehog gets angry, they tend to get quietly defensive. They curl up in a little ball, don't really say anything, but they do get really prickly. You can tell there's something wrong, but they don't want to tell you, or they think that you should just know. And this tends to be a problem, well, a bit of a problem with people who are introverted. These kind of people don't shout or scream or attack people. They try to quietly bury their anger down, but instead it ends up overtaking them and they become touchy and even outright bitter, going over what happened to them in their heads again and again, refusing to forgive. They tend to end up quietly plotting against whoever happens to be the object of their wrath, attacking them behind their backs and spreading cowardly gossip instead of just talking to that person. They turn into a little ball of hatred which builds itself up to dangerous levels. And I believe that could be what happened with the, the police officer who killed George Floyd, which sparked all the protests that we're seeing and reading about today. At this point, we can only speculate what on earth he was thinking when he did that. But the killing seems so deliberate that, perhaps after 19 years on, on the force, he had let anger and bitterness build up and build up within him to the point where he no longer cared about protecting people anymore, or even saw the value of human life anymore. Perhaps he was angry about things he'd seen over the years as a police officer, or, or some mistreatment he'd received from his superiors, or perhaps he had residual anger against his father, or, or some childhood trauma. What he did on that day was utterly inhuman, and deserves the most serious punishment. But he's still a human being, like the rest of us, and, and there were still human reasons for what he did, emotional reasons, and traps of anger and bitterness of, of the same kind that we face too, every day, and which tempt us to attack other people. That can happen to people who respond to their anger like a hedgehog. It gets all rolled up into a prickly ball. Secondly, you get rhinos. When someone who's a bit of a rhino gets angry, they love to express it. They shout, they scream, they swear, they tend to overreact. They're often in trouble with the police for various road rage incidents or domestic disputes. Some rhinos will even take it further and become violent, whatever it takes to try and get it out of their system. And when they're done, they feel great for a moment. But the problem is they, they leave a trail of destruction and broken relationships behind them. And this is what's happening within a lot of the protests that are sweeping across America right now and even in the UK, as very foolish people respond to their fears and anger with mindless looting, attacks and vandalism. All of us know a few rhinos and have probably felt their force too, as they find some reason to project their anger onto us and snap, which never does any good for anyone. Well, those are two pretty unhealthy ways people deal with their anger. Is there a third way though, a better way? Well, one of my great heroes is Martin Luther King Jr. And with things as they are today in the world, I wish he was still here with us now. His famous book, Strength to Love, detailed how important he felt it was to fight for the civil rights cause, to fight against injustice, but in a way that also involved forgiveness from the heart in order to see justice come in a peaceful way. That was what he was most famous for, seeking justice, speaking the truth to power and tyranny, yet at the same time holding forgiveness and peace in his heart and encouraging it in others. Although that really wasn't Martin Luther King Jr's way, it was the way he had learned as a Christian through his relationship with Jesus Christ by applying what he had learned in the Bible.
He was a man of God, a pastor who chose to walk in Christian humility and deal with his anger in the way of Jesus. When we look in the Bible, we see lots of very clear warnings all over it about the exponential danger of holding on to our anger and reacting to our feelings in the wrong way. The book of Proverbs says, people with quick tempers cause a lot of quarreling and trouble. And those who control their anger have great understanding. Those with a hasty temper will make mistakes. Psalm 37 says, don't give in to worry or anger. It only leads to trouble. And Ecclesiastes says, keep your temper under control. It is foolish to harbor a grudge. And then of course, Jesus came and he had quite a lot to do with and to say about anger. In Jesus, we can see that it's okay to feel anger. It's not a sin to be angry, it's just a feeling. Jesus saw injustice around him and he saw ungodliness and it all made him very angry. The greatest example of this was his clearing of the tables of the money changers at the temple courts in Jerusalem. Where we read about it in the Gospels of Matthew and John, it's made pretty clear that he wasn't violent towards the people there themselves, and don't listen to any foolish people who try and persuade you otherwise, but he was definitely pretty passionate and forceful in dealing with their stalls and possessions, even putting the fear of God into them, and rightly so. He wanted to upturn a corrupt practice that had taken hold in the house of God itself, the one place where the Jewish world was meant to be completely perfect and totally holy. Jesus also showed in his life and teachings that he cared deeply about justice and fairness. Jesus was never someone who would wink at sin or ignore injustice, which is a stern reminder that we need to take very seriously how we live our lives and, and relate to the people around us. But Jesus always controlled his anger and he urged people on to find any way they could to reconcile with their rivals, as we've heard in our reading. In Matthew chapter 18, he reminds his followers that if ever we have a problem with someone else, we're to go to that person directly and talk about it with them. Instead of giving in to the temptation to gossip and attack them behind their back, which I know is a huge temptation for me that I sometimes have to fight against. Jesus urged that we work for justice, but also reconciliation. But he also reminds us that our heart attitude to anger is what makes all the difference. In our passage, he's saying that anyone who dismisses or dehumanizes someone in their heart and chooses just to see them as an idiot to be opposed instead of a fellow human being to be reasoned with and even loved despite their adversity is in danger of some pretty serious spiritual torment themselves, even cautioning them of the fires of hell. And that really is a firm warning. Jesus wants us to stand up for righteousness and justice, even if it costs us. He wants us to protect people who are in danger. And that could mean calling the police on criminal activity or, or reporting foolish or divisive behavior to the right people in authority, whatever the context is. But most important of all to Jesus, as always, is the state of our heart as we do so. Are we using our anger sensibly to try and affect righteousness in the world? Or are we choosing to hold on to our anger and let it turn into bitterness, dehumanizing in our minds those who oppose us instead of seeking to love them into changing and doing the right things? I have personally chosen that path of bitterness many times, even for some years after I became a Christian. It hurt me and turned me into quite an ugly person. I was a real hedgehog, getting prickly with all those around me and, and choosing to quietly attack people behind their backs, choosing a path of jealousy and bitterness. And I regret that so much now that I look back. But thankfully, God helped me to find a way out of that bitterness and anger. And it was through Jesus' teaching on anger that I was reminded of the danger of holding on to it and reacting to difficult situations by, by sinning back into them. But also, God did something wonderful inside me to help. 
he began to remind me by putting on my mind just how far I had fallen in my life myself and done things wrong, just how much I needed God's forgiveness, infinitely more than, than others needed mine, and just how grateful I'd been when other people forgave me. He reminded me of that too. Having God remind me of all those things, it humbled me and broke me in a way, and it filled my heart with thankfulness. How can I hold my anger against someone else and become bitter in my heart when God was willingly and lovingly always forgiving me of so very much, even when I least deserved it? Whenever you feel anger, remember to have self-control. Ask for help from the Holy Spirit. Whenever you feel anger, remember to have humility, to remember how much God has forgiven you. Remember to have self-control if you're a bit of a rhino. And remember to have self-awareness if you're a hedgehog. Ask for help from the Holy Spirit. Stand up to the injustice and talk directly to the person you feel angry with if you can. Yet do so with a humble heart, full of thankfulness for the forgiveness that you have already received yourself so that you can break any cycle of anger that threatens to gain a foothold in your life. Remember to love and pray for the person who's hurt you. Pray for your enemies, because you never know. God might be more ready than you think to give you new eyes to see them as he does. Eyes of love towards someone who's probably hurting themselves. The same eyes of love that he has fixed upon you. Amen. And now we're going to say some prayers together. May we pray. Our oh, Father God, thank you so much for this new day. And as we reflect on anger, we see so much injustice in this world. There's so much to be angry about right now. There's so much that hurts. Injustice in the world, injustice in politics, injustice in our lives, and past hurts and bitterness that we may be suffering from. Lord, there's so much anger and we recognise the cyclical nature of it, that the anger that we hold on to causes us to be bitter and angry and, and treat other people badly, which causes them to be angry with us too. And, and Father God, we pray today that you would fill each of us with your spirit so we could break that cycle of anger by remembering with joy just how much we have been forgiven by you, just how much you have loved us. Help us to stand up for justice, help us to stand up for righteousness, but always, just like Jesus, just like Martin Luther King Jr., to do so with a humble heart of thankfulness, a heart of love towards our enemies. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father, we pray this morning for our local community. We thank you for everyone who's working together to make Abba Porth, Blind Porth and Better Sea Van safe for everyone. Thank you for the community spirit that's here. Thank you for the key workers who are doing so much to help our nation, for doctors and nurses in the NHS, uh, to um, bin men and, and postal workers and, and people who are working so hard in the supermarkets. Lord, thank you for all of them and we pray your protection over our nation, over our hospitals, over our doctors and nurses, that you would pour your grace and your spirit and your wisdom and your hope and your energy into them to help them to keep going. And Lord, we pray that you would pour out your wisdom over our governments in Westminster and in Cardiff and even at local levels so that we can find as a nation the best way into transitioning back to normal life again and hopefully it'll come soon. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And now we take a moment of silence just to remember in our hearts, in a little moment of quiet, just anyone we know to be sick or unwell, to be suffering, to be in trouble, to be worried, to be fearful, to be in need of God. We especially remember Jeremy, David Tizard's son, and we remember, remember anyone else who's had a difficult diagnosis or, or who might be battling against cancer or other long-term health problems. We take a moment of silence, just lift them in your hearts now. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And finally, Father, we pray once again 
that you would fill us and your church with your Holy Spirit so that we might be perfect for you, full of love, full of joy, contagious Christians who other people see in the world and who want to be like us. Lord, we pray that your church would always be vibrant and fresh and new, full of life, full of hope, full of welcome, full of acceptance, full of wonder, that all people of all races and all backgrounds, uh, male or female, would always be welcome in our churches and in our societies. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And together we say the words of the Lord's Prayer, firstly in Welsh and then in English. Ein tad ar honati nenevoid, sanctadia de enu, dela de denas, granella de elchis, megis in a nev, vetli ala thy heaven, to learn ye in balabanadiol, a matha in ye in deledion, valamadon nenai in deledwe, akna calwai ni provedigaith, a the gwalad ni lag drug, can I say the teal denas, al gatli, al cogonient, and oi soi soi. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. And our final song today is an Irish hymn from the Victorian times, a beautiful song which disappeared for a while but enjoyed a big resurgence in modern times, and it's called Before the Throne of God Above. A bendeth du hotlachliog, a tard a marb a lusbidlan, the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son and Holy Spirit, be with you and those who you love, now and forevermore. Amen. Satan t-